we are back with a review of the Blue Jackets getting a win somehow over the Florida Panthers by the score of 5-3 to three in Columbus. Uh, this is a game where the Blue Jackets definitely you feel like they stole this one. They were definitely getting outplayed. The shots on goal by the end of the game uh, favored the Panthers 50-23. to 23. You usually do not allow 50 shots and also get outshot by more than double and come away with a multi-goal lead at the end of the game. But that's just how something sometimes things go. Uh, Johnny Hockey had a pretty tremendous night. He had three points. Uh, Tarasov was just a freaking wall, and I'll get more into him later. Uh, however, as the game started, you could tell that the Blue Jackets are playing like a team that had just played yesterday and got their ass kicked, which is that kind of that's kind of what happened. Uh, they played yesterday against the Red Wings and got their ass kicked. Eh, sometimes that happens. Uh, Brady Kachuk scoring off a deflection all alone. Nobody else was there except for him and Tarasov. And then after that, he was after that goal he allowed Tarasov was a wall. He was solid before then too, uh, but he was just preventing prime chances left and right, doing uh, pretty well. Uh, to stop the game from becoming 2-0 in the first period. And then Yegor Shinikov with a steal and a breakaway score that gave the Jackets a lot of much-needed life. Uh, the, the Jackets, again, they were looking very slumped over. They looked kind of dead in the water. And then that uh, steal and score happens. He gets that breakaway goal with that shot and the beating. Uh, goalie Bob, oh, hello, old friend, Bob, Bobrovsky, hello, whatever. Uh, you know, And that gave the Jackets a lot of life. You can see a little bit more pep in their step, even if the... Uh, shot disparity between the two didn't really get much better. You did see the Jackets kind of uh, playing with an extra gear once they saw that they could actually tie the game and maybe uh, carry some momentum. And then Tarasov does do a really good job to keep it uh, tied at one through the end of the first period. Now the second period power play goal that the Blue Jackets did have, yes, uh, to make it two to one, ESPN has it as Boone Jenner's goal, and I tend to agree. However, NHL.com still has it listed as uh, credited to Kent Johnson. I'm pretty sure Boone Jenner got his stick down and, and deflected it in. Something definitely caused it to go down, whether it was Boone Jenner's stick or Bobrovsky's own padding. I'm not sure, but I, I do think Boone Jenner did have the goal there. Uh, Kent Johnson, though, has been looking quite dangerous the past two games. I am all in favor of giving him uh, more ice time. Uh, I think he should at least be playing a top six role. Maybe he's not on the top line if you don't want to put him there, you know, against the other team's best players or whatever. But I do think his current play has warranted uh, some more playing time. And I do think he, while he is starting technically on the third line, uh, throughout these last couple of games, he has been getting uh, promoted to higher lines and more ice time within the game. So that's good for Kent Johnson. And that's good for the Blue Jackets both now and for the long-term future. If Kent Johnson is going to be uh, part of their solution and a part of their youth movement then he's going to have to start getting a lot more minutes uh in the in the upcoming future you'd think uh daniel tarasov with more great saves and more great sequences uh throughout the second period however ekblad would put a re would put on a really nice move with the puck a lot of forehand backhand actions he didn't just beat tarasov he beat like uh, the blue jackets defense which isn't saying a whole lot but still aaron ekblad uh with a tremendous tremendous moves there to tie the game at two and that's what the score would be at heading into the third period early in the third period the Panthers would get a power play however that would lead to a Sean Corrales shorthanded goal nice to see the penalty kill uh, and their efforts uh, getting paid off with a goal the Blue Jackets uh, penalty kill very good tonight they played very well against the a Panthers power play that does have plenty of weapons on it so good for the Blue Jackets to kind of uh, stifle that power play from the Panthers a little bit and then Johnny Goudreau scoring a little bit later to make it four to two and once you get that two goal lead kind of in the third that's when you really started to feel that the Jackets really could get away with this I mean the, at this point the shot disparity is still largely in favor of Florida but you look at the scoreboard and it's like oh the Jackets have uh, doubled the goals in you know that Florida has and that's what really what what you show when a goalie just decides to stop allowing pucks to, to pass him sometimes having a bad defense or an offense that's on fire uh, sometimes you can ignore all that and just do your thing and the Blue Jackets played with a certain confidence that they, they kind of knew that they they knew that Tarasov would be okay and they that they, they knew they could take chances and take risks and it does lead to more uh great offensive play i know their total shot total of 23 isn't phenomenal or, or anything uh but considering they only had four shots at the end of the first period you know they they, they played I, I feel like they played a lot better as the game went on again tarasov more than doing his part 
to ensure that the Blue Jackets were coming away with a bit of a highway robbery win here. The Panthers would empty the net. Boone Jenner draws a penalty that maybe you could argue could have been called uh, a goal, but it, maybe it's because Boone Jenner technically hadn't touched the puck yet that maybe they didn't say you know it wasn't a clear shot or anything. So whatever. On that power play, though, Boone Jenner would get that goal on that power play. And it, was, it wasn't it was an empty net. Bobrovsky was there off of a brilliant pass from Johnny Hockey. So that was his third point. Uh, and the Panthers would get one back in the form of Colin White uh, with a goal right in front of the net. But besides that, there were no more goals. Jackets win 5-3. And I must reiterate, Daniil Tarasov was just on a heater. He was a brick wall tonight. Uh, is that goalie performance going to come every game for the Blue Jackets? Probably not. But you know what? When, again, when the Blue Jackets got hit with a bunch of injuries in 2019 and 2020, uh, both Jornis Corposalo and Elvis Merzlikens had really, really big stretches of just being one of the hottest goaltenders in the league and that, you know, in that stretch for that where they had, where they would come in. And when Corby got hurt, Elvis picked up right where he left off. If Daniil Tarasov can be that guy for a little bit, this. A uh, brief period of time when when Elvis is hurt. I don't, what do you do? Do you just send him back to Cleveland even if Elvis comes back? And even if Daniil Tarasov uh, looks like the best goalie on the roster? I mean, maybe you do that. Maybe you say that, you know, this season, while they are picking up a little bit more wins at a bit more of a rapid pace, this season is still probably one you just want to flush down the toilet because of all the injuries that are happening. And uh, there's not going to be too many contributors coming back anytime soon. Line A is still at least a couple weeks out. So maybe you'd, you'd send Tarasov back down to Cleveland. But at this point, Jonas Corposalo and Daniil Tarasov have been your two most consistent goaltenders throughout throughout this season. Elvis Merzlikens, I'm not saying there's not time for him to, uh, you know, never be a good goaltender again this season or never, you know, get a chance to start another game from the Blue Jackets. But if you are claiming that this is going to be played as a meritocracy, right now Corpy and Tarasov are the, the one and two by as far as performances go. But anyway, uh, I'll take two points for the Blue Jackets. I know there are fans that are like, oh, you have to, we have to worry about our draft pick right now. I, I don't know. We, we've had high draft picks before. They, we're still in the situation that we're in. I'm just going to enjoy the wins as they come and deal with the consequences of those later, I suppose. And maybe that makes me, uh, maybe that, maybe that makes me, you know, I'm, I'm living in the, too much in the moment. But again, I, I do like to see when my team wins. Uh, so thank you all for watching. If you did make it this far, please feel free to leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like it. Let me know what you think about this game in the comments below. And I will see you at the next one.